call a meeting to order at 6.08. And as part of reorganization, we'll do a much more broader reorganization next Thursday. But in order to get to a uh, warning, which is our main piece of business, we need a chair and a clerk. So I would uh, invite any motions for a chair for the Army School Board. I nominate Chris McVeigh. Second. Chris, you willing to? I am willing to serve. Are there any other nominations? All those in favor of Chris McVeigh? We have a quick discussion. Yeah. Last year, Brian, you had some concerns. Did you feel like it went okay with Chris's chair? And are you happy with this? I'm fine. Okay. That's it. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of Chris McVeigh being chair of Romney Board for next year, signify by saying aye. 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 Christine. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Sir. Thanks. So, uh, next order of business is uh, to welcome our visitors and thank you for attending <coughs> us and coming in. And um, it will be a short meeting, but thanks for, for showing up. Uh, and next is to elect it, uh, a clerk. Um, are there any nominations for clerk of the Romney School Board? <laughs> any volunteers? <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with being the clerk. I don't mind volunteering. Um, then as long as I know what the responsibilities are. <laughs> Allison? I was not, I don't think I was like the model clerk here. <laughs> uh, I nominate Katie Chabot for clerk. Second. Um, any other nominations? Any discussion? Other than thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, all in favor of Katie Chabot being our clerk? Say aye. 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 Um, so we um, are on a, a Tom Levin and um, Amy, do you, what, what do we need to address? Um, I would love uh, for us to take care of staff concerns as they have travel. Okay. Um, and then I would love to hear your uh, final verdict on the building use stuff. Okay, so. great. Um, so um, part of what we're going to talk about tonight is the um, principal search uh, committee. And we received a letter from um, our staff members asking that we uh, consider hiring a, uh, a third party outside consultant to guide the search, is my understanding. And um, since, since we received that letter today, we'd like to just hear um, from you, if you're willing to share, um, the bit, you know, why you, you're asking us to do that. Uh, just, um, uh, I guess so that there's the highest confidence uh, from all the stakeholders in the process that the process isn't getting sort of, you know, off and sort of odd angle one way or the other. And because, um, you know, we're, we're really feeling, the staff is really feeling like we need to, to, to move as quickly as possible so that the applicant pool is as rich as possible. You know, people are out there looking for jobs and uh, getting hired. So the sooner that we can start looking at applicants, uh, the better the um, options will probably be. Uh, you want anything about that? No, I hear for that, but something yeah. on a little different vein. Okay. So I'll wait till you're done. Okay. So those those were the the, the main thoughts that went into the. Um, to the, this particular letter, you know, when we met, you know, just the other afternoon, you know, after um, just considering, you know, just how things were at, at that point. So a lot of people felt strongly about that. Okay, so why don't you go ahead with uh, another. Oh, so the Paris met today to pick our representative, um, and we picked Krista Daniel. Um, but we also, Chris Malone, who is our behavior specialist, had voiced an interest in being on the search committee and kind of got caught out in limbo land because he's not a teacher, so he wasn't considered with the teachers. He's not a member of the community, and he's not a para. Um, but we all felt very strongly that he needs to be on the board. He works very, the committee. <coughs> He works very closely with the principal. We've come a long way in our discipline um, in two short years. And to not 
have his um, input, um, I think would not be a good thing. Um, we felt very strongly about that. So we would like you to consider putting him on the search committee. Um, Thank you. Yep. Um, any any board members have questions for um, Chip or your town? I branded okay. first. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, for outside consultant, yeah. do you have something in mind in terms of outside of central office, outside of our community? Is that, do you um, have a little bit more of a... I think we, we felt like it would probably be best uh, if it was somebody that actually sort of does this for, a, you know, that's their, that's what they do. That's what they uh, practice. That's what they offer you know, as far as the skill set goes. Um, and we know that that might not be cheap, but, um, but it was something important enough we really wanted to bring that to the board. Um, uh, you know, I suppose there could be somebody within the community that has that skill set. I don't know if there is such. You know, uh, people discussing it yesterday didn't feel as if going outside you know, looking for a non Middlesex resident was was an absolute but but all of us that work in the school system, you know, you know, whether it's up at the central office or, you know, in the buildings, you know, we've got a lot on our place just in terms of work. But the other thing is, you know, we really you know, our vision is focused by, you know, our, the jobs that we do, you know. And somebody that Somebody that doesn't have to see it from the teacher point of view, doesn't have to see it, you know, from the central office point of view, but can hear and listen uh, to those points of view and help us um, listen to each other better okay. would be probably very facilitative. Thank you. And can you tell us what the um, um, overall? I'm assuming this is an overall consensus of the, and is it the teaching staff or? Uh, or there. It, Beyond that, we've we the people that met yesterday afternoon were teaching staff, but we went around the building. To see the parents weren't in the meeting, but we went around the building to to just sort of report out to them, and and I think the parents are pretty yeah pretty up to speed on on what our thinking was. Okay. Um, so uh, one of the things that uh, mentions in the letter is uh, the, the importance of having a neutral party. And we're just thinking about the process as being the process and uh, sort of the, the structure is going to be the way the structure is in terms of the hiring committee. Um, the, uh, the process of going through, I, the vetting process to a certain extent I would imagine is going to be similar to how it was done the last, last way. The recommendation will be made, be made by the committee to the superintendent who will then um, Recommend or not to the board. So I get so what I'm I'm trying to understand what um, the neutral sort of this idea of neutral party. Um, like what exactly does that mean to you guys? Because I feel like no matter who is involved, for example, if we're going to hire someone, uh, and we and, and Bill has actually pushed for this uh, approach a few weeks ago uh, with us and. Uh, we were concerned in part for the cost, and one of the concerns that sort of I had as I thought about it was uh, what, if there's a recommendation to us by the superintendent to, uh, of a person to hire to do this work, we go through this sort of a similar process that we did last year, go through the same channel, channel you know, channels of how a, a person is uh, offered the job, where, where's the neutral? Where, where's the neutrality coming? That might be different than sort of what um, another process would be. I think. I think. I think the main thing is um, because you know we over the last three years, you know, we've you know we've had some some challenging climate issues and challenging trust issues and people, you know, people. Um, are still, I guess they still have a little PTSD from going through all that, and and um, and I think we just uh, didn't want to have to worry about um, 
the facilitation of the process um, uh, starting to become a person personality kind of thing, you know, where, I mean, it's not as if, you know, the I think the role of, that we're imagining, and, and, and Bill, you can speak to this, it's a facilitative role. It's, yeah. it's not that the person exerts authority over the the members of the committee or advises them on what they think the best um, decisions should be. It, it's just that, you know, for us to be able to focus on our responsibilities as a committee um, and and think hard about the candidates. You know, it'd be nice to know the the person sort of who's being our facilitator. You know, doesn't have um, what's what's they don't have a a, a dog in the game or what's the axe to grind an axe grind or a dog in the race or something like that. So I would I would add. Um, <coughs> My seven years of being superintendent here and my four years of leading principal searches as a curriculum director, I have not had the experience where a superintendent goes against the recommendation of the committee. And I think that that's really bad for a candidate if you do that as a superintendent because you set up the process. And if the process is set up right, <coughs> the person that's best fit for the community is going to come out of that process. Sometimes that's limited because of the pool of people that apply. Mm -hmm. And that's really the piece that's the biggest piece right now because time is of the essence mm -hmm. uh, for those of us in education. And the, and the teachers, when I talked to you yesterday, because I came up just to say, hey, you talk about them selecting themselves. Right. And then they asked me some about the search candidate. And I said, you know, I said, the biggest thing I'm worried about right now is time. Right. So the facilitator doesn't need to be the chair of the committee. They pretty much are acting that way, Chris, because they're running yeah. the process. Yeah. Just like as you run the process for this board meeting. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, so then I was going to say, because if the chair was different than the facilitator, there'd be a, a power sharing or an authority sharing role. Um, it might, might be more cumbersome. Um, I, 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 so I've never experienced that being different, that the person that's facilitating it. I mean, they're one, they're facilitating it, but if they're a good facilitator, they're doing it in a way to get all voices right. to the table. Right. And they, they would just help us um, on our timetables. They'd keep us, you know, they'd remind us of things if we got really embroiled in a, uh, you know, some particular aspect of considering candidates. Labor, they, they labor would keep laws. The, they, yeah, they would, keep the, they would keep the process on track. I think um, my only, I mean, I, I hear the concern, absolutely. The only sort of concern that I have in terms of timeliness is what, um, what it takes to find someone who is a facilitator and whether then we're setting ourselves up to actually delay our opportunity for posting and, um, and then going through the, the hiring and interview and hiring process. So that's, my, that's like one of my bigger concerns is that to find someone and then vet those candidates. <laughs> I'm not sure how long that would take. Right. But there was someone identified, Just correct? And then oh, yeah. we exactly talked right. about a, another person as <clears throat> well, or you guys did recently, and I wondered if that um, there's any more conversation about that and if the teachers ha would have any input about that person. So I think we just... in interest of, of time, um, we're going to have that, I think we'll have that discussion as a group, but let, let the um, staff members go and then let's address what Amy's concerns are, because she also has a time issue, and then we can come back to the okay. search committee, just, it's just a timing okay. issue. But there. I just wanted to confirm that my experience with corporate governance was very much along the lines of having a separate field sales hater and chairperson makes a difference as far as the ability of the chairperson then to participate as an active member rather than also having to coordinate facilitation. So, Yeah, they're, they're, they're an outside facilitator, and frankly, when the central office has done it, they're not, when Jen and Kelly, they're neutral, they're facilitating, but they're not voting on the process. Um, question? Yeah. In that situation, <clears throat> let's say that we get our committee together, we've got the facilitator, would it be the... Um, standard operating uh, procedure or protocol that the, the committee members would elect from one of the, from amongst themselves somebody to be the chair but yeah, the facilitator would be I, I think we I don't see that we'd have any problem with that no. <clears throat> yeah. 
Um, any other comments um, at this point? Okay. Um, thank you very much for coming and, and sharing your thoughts with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Amy, given time, yeah. our time factors, you need decisions on? On the building use. Okay. Specifically around insurance and charging fees. Okay. Who and under, you know, it appeared on the form that you were leaving, like, that there was quite a bit that was principal discretion, you know, this, and I really wouldn't I, prefer it to be that way. Okay, and you know what this, my, yeah. um, the changes that I would, was thinking about, didn't yeah, make any yeah. this, but this was just an old form so oh, good. for folks have. Um, but in, in terms of the insurance part, yeah, um, we should talk about that, because I, I don't think the lack of insurance um, should be a stumbling block for a community member to use to participate in using the building. So I just need I I would appreciate um, having a word a from direction the board from direction from the board um, as to the risk tolerance that you would like to shoulder. Okay. So I was um, just and this is a discussion point. Um, we would, we made a pretty clear distinction last time between uh, for profit groups and non profit non profit groups, um, and um, I'm wondering if, right? We, um, we specifically only fee? only spoke to AAU last the last time that I'm aware of. Unless we made a, we made a sort of a, a interim decision to address a pressing need, but with the, the idea that we would come back and create a more blanket. Okay, so I I would propose for discussion that in terms of requiring insurance, that we make a distinction between for profit groups versus um, non-profit groups uh, and then make a further distinction within that whether it, it's a community group like Middlesex community group versus an outside community group um, as to whether or not we would require insurance because I correct me if I'm wrong Bill here is that if we had um, a group that came in or individuals that came in it doesn't need to be a group and we're using the facility um, that if there was a an issue of of injury or something else, uh, that our blanket coverage would address that. It would address that. Um, our insurance company has told us if there's a group that has insurance, we need them to sign us on as a co-insurer yeah, co under their policy. Right. And I would just get uh, Chris. I know I'm going a little further than what you asked, but I yeah. just want to say no, no. The more uh, is better. Non-profit is, is not a distinction I think that you should make. Mm -hmm. okay. There are many non-profits. Vermont has the highest concentration of non-profits that, um, that make profit and are able to cover themselves and take care of themselves. <laughs> and they take advantage of school systems. Okay, so then what would, what's a workable, um, uh, a workable criteria that we have where we're going to require someone to have insurance versus not insurance. Um, and, and that's why our insurance agent is giving you the advice that they gave me to give you, which was that you have insurance for all people that come in. That's what our insurance agent Well, of course is. that's what they want us to do. I, I understand no, that. No, but that's just but I, have to, I, have I mean, no, you're right. I have just to communicate. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> and so, so, because I, you know, it's, it's, and it's back, it's a back to that risk piece of, uh, having folks come in and use the building and having that piece. So it's right to what Amy said. It's a risk tolerance of the board. And what level do you want to do that? I can't calculate you some number of how to make that risk tolerance mm -hmm. decision. It's going to be a feeling, frankly, from all of you. So, so let's start with the... Um, can't get too analytical about who, this. Who would we require insurance from? The group wanted to use the building. Who would we require it from? Um, I, I think that someone who's going to be making a profit is an easy one because they're in business. They're in a business, profit-making business, and insurance is basically part of their responsibility. So can I? Maybe I can help you down the road a little bit. Sure. If I'm in the Morristown school system where I'm a board member and an active member and a couple of nonprofits for kids things, um, if I want to use the outside grounds or the inside of the building. And I have a nonprofit status. I have to show insurance. So I've got a little Billy Cope Club that I was ahead of until last year, and I had to get everyone signed up through New England Nordic Association because they would cover our club with insurance to be able to ski on the grounds. 
And so people have more access than we think sometimes. If I were thinking about, someone said, uh, let's just use the um, Middlesex, uh, the group that's talking about usage and coming together. What's the band? Yeah, the, what's, what's, you know, they're, they may not be as an established group. So there's going to be, this is where some of that judgment comes in, but I also understand Amy's question, because she's asked me the question, and I said, we need to ask the board this question about the level at which we ask people for that, for that, that piece. If they're sitting to have a meeting, that might be something different. Um, I know we don't, you know, the Vermont Insurance Trust that most schools are at that we don't have recommends very stringent policies. Um, for most, you know, by 80 to 90% of schools in Vermont are part of that, for people using the building to be covered by them. So I think that you, you know, if you would say maybe it's the, it's a middle sex group that's part of something affiliated with a town, you know, and, and how you determine that affiliation. That's why I said it's more of a feeling than it is a calculation that you're going to be able to get to an analytical decision tree. Mm -hmm. How much, how, how long in advance do most people book want, want, is this like a next week or we want this next month? It, it varies. So there's varies. people who want it close up pretty There's frequently. people that are waiting right now for this decision, <laughs> frankly. Historically, in the past 10 years, outside of what happened with what's next Middlesex, who uses this inside and the grounds? Who, what's the usage? Um, Boy Scouts. Um, Girl Scouts, yeah. Girl Scouts. Um, Wednesday night men's pick up basketball. Mm -hmm. I think there have been book groups. Yeah, there have been I'm music lessons that, that folks have uh, used the facility to um, uh, to support. AAU. AAU. What is that? That's a it's a basketball. 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 Little League. Little, little, little League. league. Mm -hmm. Inside? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Right in the gym. Right. Okay. So Little League. Um, Use this as a space. Yeah. yeah. See, I would consider them just kind of. They're actually a nonprofit. They're only a nonprofit. Okay. Because national PTO. There have been some, I think there's been an occasion or two where uh, the kitchen's been used to create food for a wedding or an event like that. I think that has happened over the years. Not a lot, but occasionally. Um, so, like private community members, yeah. you mean? Yeah. yeah. I also um, think that we need to consider um, with the kitchen stuff, um, in particular our nut allergies and making sure um, you know that we're taking appropriate measures there. There's some schools in our district, I believe, that actually don't, don't no, allow it. Yeah, no, we don't have allow, that don't allow uh, kitchen of our use. We don't because of the peanut and other nut allergies. Mm -hmm. Level of cleanliness, if it's contaminated, you need to go to the expense is quite high. So, um, I'd say that would be the only, the other thing that I would flag. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel really conflicted about this because there's a large part of me that thinks the function of our school, like our school is stronger and better the more people come here and mm -hmm. use it. And I want our community members to want to come here and to, like the more events that we have, like those are just more ways to strengthen the ties and help kids get here and make people more comfortable and then encourage parents to come to the school and all these good things kind of happen from that. And I'm also offended that we have become this society where we are just, you know, everybody's constant. I mean, I have to think about it and work all the time. Like, who's going to be, you know, who's responsible for this? And so I find that offensive. And so there's this part of me that wants to be like, let's let people use it. We have insurance. <laughs> let's let people use it. And then there's this other part of me that feels like I should probably be more responsible than that. And um, so what comes to mind is, could we potentially say that if you are associated, like, for instance, if your group is or can be associated with a larger group, so Bill Coakley can be associated with New England. Nordic. Thank you. And basketball, you know, Boy, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, obviously they have an obvious link in association. Then you have to have insurance and um, you have to get it before you come. And otherwise, I mean, we could say people have to have insurance, but on a case by case basis, if they come to us ahead of time, they can get to the board, not make it not the principal's problem. So they'd have to plan ahead and they could, we could release them from that. Or we could just go with a, if you have, if you can have an affiliation with a larger group, you have to provide your own insurance. 
And if for smaller groups, things like the PTO, well, obviously, I don't think there's a some larger league of PTO groups that could provide insurance for them. So that feels Maybe. prohibitive. There actually is. There's a national PTO organization. <laughs> so do so. we know if our PTO one no. is insured? <laughs> Because I'm not going to ask that probably one not. person probably not. to, <laughs> to come and have a meeting with herself. Right. I mean, right. that's crazy. And so the other part of this is fees. And I guess I feel the same way about fees. I actually think that we should have a blanket charge that's, that's reasonably, that definitely covers our costs for everything. But we should set up a specific amount of money, maybe when we take in those fees, that goes into a certain fund where people can come here and they can say, look, we want to have this event or we had this event. Will you pay for part of it? And we have specific money set aside to for people that, for groups that are deserving in our minds or that don't have the money, don't have the funds, that we would then essentially credit them that back. But it's, it's off the principal's plate because it's not her having to make that decision. They would have to come, give us a little spiel, and we can refund or pay ahead for their fees if we want to be more like risk averse, I guess. The, the fees to me are not a risk situation. It's cost of employees, yeah. and it's, it's yeah. taking away from the school. I would say the same thing. We shouldn't. If the fees aren't that, it's making the school covered. available, we shouldn't have to subsidize then the right. cost of, of that beyond providing school and electricity and things like that. And yeah. we don't have to charge that. But for cleaning fees right. and things like that, we we shouldn't be responsible for cleaning up after a group that is using the school. Like, uh, well, but we talked about before, like there being a cleaning fee, and somebody said, well, what if they leave it really clean? Do they get that back? And so that, there's all this where, gray that's, area. That's, that's where I'd say my recommendation to you as a superintendent is to be exactly like, there's a cleaning fee. I'm sorry, there's a cleaning fee, and that's what it is. And mm -hmm. So what about like our PTO? Do we charge our PTO a cleaning fee? You know, that is a, you know, there's, there's a certainly a um, indirect benefit to our school and our community by making the school accessible. The PTO, I think, has a very direct benefit to our school. Right, and that's um, So that's that. where I would make a distinction there between, you know, opening up for, um, you know, Wednesday night basketball or, or Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, things like that. Because um, PTO really, I see, is a, a kind of a, an or, kind of a school organization yeah. as opposed to a right. community organization. Right. And and so I would make a distinction for for that on that point. So would that be um, individual groups that we make that distinction for, or do we just put a few in there and call that it? Um, like, can anybody come to us and say, we actually think we directly benefit the school and we'd like to be relieved of these fees? Is that a doable thing? Uh, they could probably come and say that, but I think we'd have to have pretty strong criteria as so that we're not constantly, um, people coming constantly in and saying we want an exemption, um, and so that we don't get into uh, more legal trouble favoring one group over another, because I don't think we want to get into that position of saying, oh, you know, for some, you know, um, some uh, not really clearly defined reason we're going to waive your fee, but we're not going to do it for this group because then you get into just mm -hmm. constitutional issues that, as a public entity, that we don't want to be dealing with. I think it's better to have a very clear, you know, th this cleaning fee applies across the board. I agree. I just don't see where the well, like, it's hard for me to find the clarity in there sometimes. Like you know, if there's groups of Middlesex students, if there's somebody getting together to do like boys you know, whatever, mentoring with Middlesex students, well, that directly directly benefits the school, benefits those students. And There might be a distinction, though, of whether it's, I mean, I don't know if there are any clubs because my kids are so young, but, like, the whatever they are, if there are clubs or things like that, I feel like that's a school activity. That's not a separate group that's asking to use the, use the so school. So do we but, not charge school activities? So or for groups that are school groups, do we not charge those? I, I would say not. Yeah. Not to charge them. Like a home, if it, we used to have a homework club? Okay. If there was a homework club, right. I would say there's we're talk not charging about them. If there's a chess club, back, right? we I would don't say charge the same them? Thing. No. What about if students from other schools come in to participate in the chess club here? Well, we'd have them pay, but not our own students. <laughs> I'm just trying to but see, like, how do we make just, strict you know, rules it's, when it's, it's so great? You know, like a student, a student activity like that, chess club, or or band. I mean, we have, we used to, you know, have bands that would get together. You know, that would be a group activity that I think would be directly related to the program, um, and you know, a benefit to our students. So that that would be something that I would say, you know, charging cleaning fees or anything like that, and and. I, I think it, maybe the distinction is if it happens what was is reasonably within the school day as opposed to right. a weekend right. uh, where you have to have someone, you know, the custodian's already on staff. 
Uh, maybe that's a distinction we can uh, make. Okay, so what have we come up with? We have come up with um, everybody pays except groups that directly benefit, groups that are directly comprised of Romney students. How do we describe that? So then that's Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, cross them off the pay list because they're all our kids, right? I mean, but they're not a school club, but they're comprised of all of our children because Montpelier point. has its own. So where is this coming from? Like, is it because of what's next Middlesex that now you're getting inundated with, like, like, has this been? Yes, we've this? absolutely had an uptick in okay. requests for the yeah, building. Yeah, that makes sense. So, And then... But so for PTO, for Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, the yeah. basketball group, prior to that, have they all signed this? Like, is this something yearly that they have yeah, to sign? Yeah, they fill it out, okay. et cetera. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thank I you. Think, I think yeah, the and they, they have not been charged up in until our, now. And, right. Amy, tell me if, I mean, in our conversations, the student stuff is pretty easy to understand. You know, that's not a hard distinction. Where it gets into is, well, and you know, what's next middle size. Yeah, okay? absolutely. Um, oh, I'd like to come and use the building for my ex-use, but I'm a private citizen, but you're trying to use this as a community center. We hear you. There's times we've had damage done in the school after mm -hmm. that. So and it's not that anyone wants to do that. No one's intending to do damage. Mm -hmm. It's just the use. I mean, that's just what it, it is. It yeah. happens. You know, no one's trying to be bad. So yeah. it's... It's how do you, you know, and what Amy has been wrestling with um, is how do I say to folks, this is where the line is of you need to do this. And, um, you know, that can make some folks in the community upset. Yeah. No, I'm completely empathetic to your and situation so that you're in. We're trying to, you know, and that this is a community resource. And I also know, and I say this because I... I don't like giving the insurance information, but I've got to give it to you as a board mm -hmm. because I know that in any rural system, the school system is the heart of the community and wants to be used for multiple events, and I want to see that done. Mm -hmm. I just want to find some guidelines that help us do that but also allow us to do the main mission of the education and make sure we keep it up. You put a lot of resources into this building to renovate it. What damage has been done to this building? We've had holes in walls. We've had uh, drawing on walls when there have been events in the gym. Sorry, I didn't mean to point at you, Kyle. The gym. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and down this hallway, damage done, things torn off. And I think it was just, frankly, roughhousing without supervision. One of the things that happens, and I've watched it in, parent con in concert nights, and it's no one being bad. It just happens. It's like, who has charge of the kids? And the teachers think the parents do, and the parents think the teachers do, and it's like, wait a minute, let's get this all organized a little bit. I remember that was one of my first, like, way back in education, I was like, oh, this is a learning right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it, that, that, it just happens. And do you know, I mean, are we talking like a hole in the wall? Is that few hundred dollars with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, or time for the, you know, for people that work here to get that right, you know. Uh, a hole in the wall can be, depending on, you know, what it is, it can be $100, it can be $1,000. And $1,000 is not a huge wall, but it's just, it's like, what's behind it, what do you have to do to get it set up, to get it fixed? Yeah, because just as a community member, I mean, I, I don't want any of those expenses incurred at the same time. I'd rather have that and have the building open to the public than not be able to hold events here. I think those are going to be few and far re between when those things happen, and if it's a few hundred dollars here and there, I'm willing to pay as a taxpayer. Mm -hmm. I agree. So how do we make guidelines out of this? Of what I don't know if we're in agreement or not, but what, what guidelines can we, like we need descriptions of some sort? I just have one more question. Oh, please. And I, th I think I asked this before, but I'm going to ask it again. When you guys did this over in the bond, there was just this blanket and understanding that this would be a community space. But yeah. so was I'm concerned about that. And I didn't even live here then. But I'm just what. Oh, I think, I, you know, I think moving toward an open opening the school up to community activities doesn't mean um, opening it up to. 
Community space, but a responsible community space is what I'd say. Um, and the fees that we're talking about are pretty minimal in terms of gaining access. Uh, and um, it, you know, it is a separate, we have a school budget that is dedicated for educating students first and foremost, um, but encouraging community use. So to the extent that any of the cleaning fees are just offsetting whatever the custodian cost right. is, and we're not talking about custodian costs necessarily that are just already being done, it's the extra. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it pertains particularly if we have events on the weekend yes. because we have to close on one end, open the building up, be here for however many hours it is, close the building up, and then take care of things. So it's, it's an added cost um, so we need in that respect. The custodian here mm -hmm. when there's an outside. Okay. I, I just got to tell you this. And this has changed in my seven years of being a superintendent, definitely since I was a kid. Um, you know, the security that we have to provide in these buildings for kids and the heightened awareness that that is in our culture now, mm -hmm. we have to make sure these buildings are secure. And so that's the, that's the reason for the custodian. Okay. That's the prime reason when I think of it as your superintendent. Okay. And Amy and I have had that. Is like, I need to ensure that this building is locked when no one's here. Okay. Mm. And it's not because anyone doesn't want to do it. It's just it's got to be done, and someone's got to be the person, to cus the custodian, not the custodian's a job, but a custodian to make sure of the school to do that. So is he here now when all the, like, exp I'm thinking of, like, the kid, the Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, is he here now when they're We have here? coverage during those times because it's uh, primarily during uh, weekdays. I think the caveat you, I would recommend you putting in is based on our ability you know it, it's going to take a willingness from my custodial staff to work overtime right they're already maxed so well, like um, last year like when... if it's if it's week if it's outside of regular working hours so i think for that to not be necessarily assumed but to understand you know they hopefully have lives too and have responsibilities to their own families and that kind of thing Last year, when the Girl Scouts held their meetings on Sundays, I don't think he was here. So are, do we have to look at it? I'm just wondering, do we, in trying to define what groups we need to charge, is it some of the community, the community groups, and these groups that are kind of already here, we aren't charging them? Yeah. Would that be yeah. one way to move forward? But I'm, but I'm just, but then I'm wondering, my second question is, is let's just say Girl Scouts decided to go back to Sunday and that Disney have to, or the custodian have to be here at that time because he wasn't two years ago. So are we changing, are we changing practices now too? Yes, I think based on an increase in our building use as well as rethinking kind of current needs around safety okay. that that's really what we're doing okay. right and i'm really just asking for board direction on that not no, no, sorry yeah i'm just trying i'm to not trying i'm not trying to change it i just i need it to be clear so that it's not putting us in a situation where it's like why is this group and not this mm -hmm. group and we've had to get really blanket and especially like berlin you know where that is it's right off the interstate mm -hmm. people want to use it all the time and so we've had to get really cut and dry and i'm not suggesting that for you understand that you know Amy did a nice she asked all her colleagues and said so what are you doing in, um, in your buildings mm -hmm. I just think that there's a legitimacy to the custodial cost and the amount of time that that takes mm -hmm. and that people have a certain number of hours that they have in their full-time position and that when we start to go beyond that I think that's a very real concern and that's where um, the fee isn't about if the fee isn't about the revenue Simply, it's about the fact that we are expanding our costs by having extra custodial hours, and that might not always be able to be served by the existing people if the use demands increase. So, um, I think it—I don't think it's unreasonable for—I um, know that gets into the gray area of for who, but um, could yeah. we, um, could we look at it as um, school-affiliated activities? Mm -hmm. So. Something like Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts has our kids, but it's not school affiliated. PTO, um, Saturday basketball, um, <coughs> are school affiliated. Could, could would that be uh, enough of a distinction that uh, there's still obviously gray areas that people can create or interpret? But 
Is that a good distinction? So, like, I'm not entirely sure what that means. I, like, I would have thought that Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts were school affiliated, but they're not. I think they are. No, I think Brian's saying they are. you saying they are? No, you're no they're, they're not. not. No, they're, they're, and they're not. They're independent organizations. There's actually federal legislation, too, about their access to schools for Book for the Scouts. Oh. What is that legislation? That they have access to the school. Oh, okay. And you can't stop it. Well, there's some people, oh. there's some schools that have tried because of their religious affiliation and their political take on things. And it's, it was put through Congress about four or five years ago. You can't stop this guns from accessing public schools. Okay, so. so <laughs> One million dollars. So, school affiliated groups. <laughs> I'm telling you what it is. Yeah. So, school affiliated groups would be able to come and would they, they would not need proof of insurance? And they would not need to pay. Is that what we're saying? If they do it within school, when when an actual custodian is still here during the hours when we have a custodian here already. Well, I think, um, like basketball is not during, yeah. like the young children's basketball is on Saturday. That's weekend. That's weekend, right? But I feel so, like that's a school sponsored right. Right. Yeah. event. Yeah. So it doesn't seem. Seems like that should be rolled into the expectations of what our school is offering. Right. Fair enough. The, Things the like the play. movies, movie nights, oh, plays. Play. Which is PTO. Right, so. So um, school affiliated groups and school sponsored events are able to use the facility without fee. I still think we need to define school affiliated. I, I'm going to need to okay, excuse so, myself yeah. to my family commitment. Thank and, you. Um, okay. I look forward to getting the, the document, though. <laughs> <laughs> Safe travels. Thank you. Yeah. A copy of it on next time's agenda? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please, I just need it now. <laughs> yeah, can we wrap Three this up so that we can... Is it possible to get make a conclusion on this? We, we need to make something that gives Amy some guidelines. Yeah. I think she's been asking this for three meetings. I feel like okay. we owe this. It's been longer than that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so school-affiliated groups and school-sponsored events are able to use the, the facility without fee and without proof of insurance. Is that true? Yes. Even for on school, weekends? I see. I think so. And I need to know whether if it's on, I'm assuming on the weekends, they would still need a custodian here. So and that. I would say no, because then you'd be having the basketball kids come in and so, pay a, a custodial fee. No, I, I would say that you do need the custodian. But, but they don't have to pay. They're not paying. we got to ask. Well, Chris, we, we, let me we just, really need some okay, here. Okay, but let me ask you a question. Um, we have, now we don't, do we? I'm not sure what. No. In terms of school, kids playing basketball on Saturday mornings for practice. That's, that's a I'm six saying. week. No. That's what it's maybe six weeks in, but I don't think we have a custodian. And we, I think oh, a parent okay. opens up and closes the building. And that's what I'm saying. I think you should change that practice. It doesn't mean the custodian, because I think you need to ensure the school is locked down. I'm just giving you what we're told mm -hmm. through safety and security through Vermont and federal resources on how to ensure your building safe. You can go against that. I'm just telling you what we are told mm -hmm. by the folks that advise us on those matters. I think that that's a, a reasonable thing for us to take into consideration. Having so, locked up many a times on Saturday mornings. Uh, and yeah, that's. So then we should bear the cost of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying you should okay. bear it. Yeah. Right. I'm okay. not saying you yeah. need to do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's what I'm saying. Right. We need to but do we it. We bear the cost of that. Yeah. Okay. I'm not okay. asking them to bear the cost. Okay. Just, we, that's, no, I that's think, a distinction. Then. I think that's the right thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a lot of responsibility for a volunteer. Right. Uh, so, that. Allison? Well, okay, but we, then we get back to what if a custodian's not available? I know. Does the event not happen? That's or, part true. Or do we deputize someone who, so parents to say, you're the one you're responsible, and you have to report, you know, report back that the building's been they secured. Get <laughs> what? They get a badge. They get a badge. Yes. So, Chris, we've done this in other buildings. We have to change their work schedule, and we change their work schedule based on knowing the, the student events. Okay. That's what we do. How has that worked? Has it worked successfully? Has it created more opportunity? Has that... Perhaps if you have a custodian, for example, that has to be around for a school-related activity, does that then create more opportunity, or more ease in allowing other people? <coughs> Not that you want I can't speak to that. All I can speak to is the work that the custodians have to do in getting it done, and they mm -hmm. get their work done in the weekly tasks they have. They have daily tasks, they have every three times a week tasks, and they have weekly and monthly tasks. And, you know, if they're here on a... In our other buildings where we have someone that's coming in on Saturdays, 
they usually, you know, the head custodian swaps work tasks to make sure the weekly cleaning needs to get done and maintenance and all that. I couldn't tell you about other access because I just don't know. Do you have higher staff turnover? Uh, I don't think we have very high. Outside of U32, our elementary buildings have pretty low staff turnover. I would say. And all the all the elementary schools are doing this now in terms of the schedule covering on weekends and such? As much as they can. Okay. It depends on the building. I mean, I just got to be honest. It's, it's about access and ease of access. The thing that's pushing this the most are, frankly, nonprofits that are looking for a cheap place to host something instead of, you know, AAU is a good example. Okay. Onion River Sports is a good, Onion River so uh, Soccer. You know, those type of things, they want an indoor place to play soccer. And, you know, they're charging kids already. I mean, that for me, if you want to ask, my opinion is, if a nonprofit is charging parents already, charge, charge what you need to to get the space. You know, that, that's, that's part of their program. Because they're making their program run off of mm -hmm. free access. And while maybe some middle sex kids, it's kids from other communities as well. The A is a good example of that. Yeah. Okay. And we're not trying to charge them a hard fee. I mean, we said, like, I think it was like $35. Is what we were no, it's, it's, not, no, no. it's not huge. Per use? Yeah. Per use, yeah. Again, because it tracks custodial. Right. Uh, the, you know, have someone having to be there. So you're going to charge Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts $35 per use? Um, that's, that's where I'm wondering whether we should expand our, our uh, definition of, of um, school affiliated activities. What's the um, current language of the policy say that? Um, I think it's, it's just that. Yeah. You go with your tabs. It makes me a little rosy when I see tabs with folders. Oh, this nice uh, <laughs> Thank you. I don't have an index though, so I have my tabs. I think it's policy 113. 113. I think so. Uh, but, uh, there should be a 113. They should usually have a <coughs> Oh, H, H13. Okay. H3. H3. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, wow, Chris. <laughs> sorry. So it says, while well, this is sub one, while the board of directors intends that the school facilities be primarily used for activities which support the school program and mission, the board understands that the Romney facility is a community resource. The board intends to enable community access to the Romney facility under the following guidelines. Um, and but it says principal will be primarily responsible for, for, for permitting community use. Um, request by local group may be granted if it does not conflict with school programming. Um, any community group seeking access to the use of the Romney facility must comply with the applicable Vermont state and federal non discriminatory laws. Uh, requests must be made in writing uh, 24 hours in advance. Uh, if the group requesting use of the building is not an established community group, the name and addresses of the participating members of the group shall be submitted with the application. The principal is authorized to allow immediate access under emergency con uh, conditions. All participants using the building shall sign a waiver of liability form as a condition of use of the building. Uh, persons requesting use of the building must, pur must purchase a certificate of insurance protecting against potential liability for potential users of the Romney uh, Memorial School, um, let's see, for, for, regular for regular users of the Romney Memorial School, well, that actually that doesn't. But not one off. Well, you know, it's a, it doesn't. Well, I'll read it as it's written. For regular users of the Romney Memorial School, shall be added as a additional insured to the existing policy. The group mandates insurance for its activities. Um, it's, I think it's missing something, yeah, actually. Yeah, I think it is missing something there. Do you have it in yours? Yeah, you read it exactly the way I read it. I know, but it's... I think it's missing something. Oh, okay, so I'm not... But you, you okay. read it exactly as it's published. <laughs> Inarticulately published. Um, and it says, the principal has discretion to withhold or withdraw use or permission from any group which has, and that goes through a series of things. Um, 
So this policy, I think, is fairly outdated in comparison with the form. I agree. Um, so, so it, it didn't seem like it's really helpful in terms of identifying community groups, in terms of giving specific criteria for that to me. And it's what I heard you you are really welcome to look if you want. Uh, but <coughs> but absolutely, what do you have to definition? School of what do I have for what? The definition in terms of student. The group's this written. is what's what I've written, trying to summarize kind sure. of sort of maybe what we've possibly been saying. School affiliated groups and school sponsored events are able to use the facility without fee and without proof of insurance. RMS will bear the cost of the custodial fees associated with those events. Events taking place after normal custodial hours are only able to be scheduled if a custodian is available during those times. All other groups and purses wanting to use the facility are required to pay a cleaning fee of something and are responsible for any additional custodial fees as well as responsible to provide proof of insurance. Insurance proof may be waived for community groups that are not associated with state or national groups and do not have official <coughs> membership. No group may use the school facility if it interferes with school programming and priority is given to school affiliated groups. Beyond that, use is available on a first come, first scheduled basis. Reasonable? Did I miss anything? Is your concern that groups like um, I know we need to wrap this up, but that groups like uh, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, that would be like a financial barrier to being able to use the space. I don't think the insurance is. I'm pretty sure that Ursula has told me they have insurance, but yeah. yeah, but we, def yeah. I'm wonderful. Do you think that? National insurance. They have national insurance. Yeah, but I don't but know. Like the fee. You can't do the fee of $35. Yeah. Okay. Is it a matter of, is it during school? I'll let her all buy my During operating hours, <laughs> school of uh, custodian operating hours. So for example, mm -hmm. if, the Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts were to be using the facility at a time that is within the hours of operation uh, or hours in that there's already a custodian on site, then no fee would be required. But if scheduling was to take place outside of that, I mean, is that, would that be one way to address it? Say that one more time So for like, me. let's say something that made it at 6 o'clock on Wednesday nights. Right. Um, there's a custodian here at that time, so that... Um, a fee would not be charged, but if they wanted to meet on Sunday afternoons at 2. And is this a school affiliated or non-school affiliated? No, is it, this is a, specifically I, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts we're talking about now, right? Yeah. Well, that's the example I'm giving. I, didn't, yeah. I wasn't necessarily drawing that right. distinction, but that's it. They're a good example. Okay. Because that is exact. that's what I'm saying is, I know that last year they did it on Sunday, this year they do it right after school, but in it's there's some barriers to doing it after school so there is consideration to go back to a weekend but if this policy were in place then that's a big that's not right. they're not going to be able to choose to do that so i guess which I, is fine yeah i feel like we could put something in there but that right groups really. regularly using the premise may apply for um the, the for fee waiver and that way, for groups that are continually yes. doing it, it might be worth it for them to come sit here and present their case. This is doing you know every week or whatever. Every two weeks we come here. Can we have a wave, you know, wave this regular fee as they can present their case? But it won't be this board if merger happens. Yeah, it's very good point. So, what? It wouldn't be this board that would decide on whether to grant a waiver mm -hmm. if merger happens. And so, if you want to give groups like Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts a, a grandfather fee waiver or what's next, no. Middlesex or something yeah. like that. The policies should be drafted like that now. Mm -hmm. I think wherever the wherever the, the decision making lies, clarity sort of is, is most yeah, important yeah. rather than allowing for discretion on a case by case. You know what I mean? I do. It just but so then we have then we have a line in the sand. Now if if somebody you know if if the some group that we doesn't seem as worthy, the satanic worshippers of atheists of Middlesex really wants to use the facility every week, which believe me, like I have no prejudice against or anything. It's just we, the community may not feel quite so warm and fuzzy about saying, oh, we'll waive your fees for you adults who are coming here as a non-organized something to do things that, you know, whatever you want to do, as we do with Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, which we feel benefits our students. So how do we clarify? Well, we can clarify by pointing to the benefit to students, um, regardless of whether it's affiliated with a national organization or not. And so if we have uh, that it's um, benefiting uh, Middlesex students, um, majority of Middlesex students anyway, is, yeah. that would be yeah, a distinction yeah. that would take away any difference dealing with adults. So regularly so scheduled than, rather groups. Rather focus on the national organization 
focus on the, the participants being the students. So if the participants are a majority of Rumney students, and this is a regular event, so like, I feel like one-offs or something, people can probably, it does cost us money, so they should probably pay for it, right? But for regular events, that I can see how that would be burdensome to... But what if we had something like folks wanted to organize a chess tournament uh -huh. from these students on a Saturday? I mean, that would be something that you, we would all want to encourage. So, Chris, I'm just going to ask you a facilitation question. Yeah. You've been talking about this issue for almost so long. For 40 I know. Okay. So, <coughs> you could keep going on this. No, no, we should bring it to. Or, um, I would tell you that I think the Berlin School has a pretty good policy. I can't find Practice. it. Practice is practices, not policy. I think most of this came from them. They usually, if they say over half the students are going to, are Berlin students because, like, they have the chess term mm -hmm. there. Let's do it. Okay. You know. Um, they do charge fees, um, but you know I think there's the, the hard part is 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 really something like what's next Middlesex? I mean, should, they're I think they're meeting right now. They're meeting in a yep. form of not taking a lot of cost and benefit during the day. The place that's going to some of the places where it's going to get gray is um, private tutoring. Folks are making money off of it, mm -hmm. you know, and so and you're going to say, well, that benefits students. Yep. You know, but people are making their living off of it too, and using our space to do that. So you would need to make a decision that that's going to be a place that's going to be gray. And when you start defining benefit to students, you know, that's the only place I can think of that's really we've had to deal with that in other schools. And music lessons, private music lessons would be the same thing. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And we've had to, um, you know, we don't charge a lot, but there's a little bit of a fee for that for using the space. So could you find, I mean, the, the criteria you're talking about with Berlin students I know, doesn't appear saying, in this form. I know it doesn't in this so form. So could you just circulate or ask? It's, I don't know if it's actually even written anywhere, but I know that that's the way their office runs it. So I can't, yeah. everybody tells me to find the Berlin one. I cannot find it on their website. I have gone, I have searched, I have I mean, searched we Google. Have the form. But yeah. this is totally, but the but guidelines for who gets that, to right. who pays. I cannot find that document. I do know if we leave this room without guidelines, our principal is going to hunt us down. <laughs> So we need to give her something, and also my children are going to degranulate in like another twenty minutes. Okay, so let's let's. Okay. Um, long you circuit, will you, you okay. I can um, email this to everyone. No, we don't have computers. I can read it again. I can email it to everybody. Okay. I'll email it to everybody right now. Great. And Bill, do you think the is there a way of finding out um, what the Berlin policy is in writing? Um, what they had, I had, I know I have their policy. It's more the procedures and practices. Okay. Are you guys so, on the Rumney SB list yet? Helpful. I don't Thank know you. if we are yet. I, I think that's in the works, so you can make a copy. Okay. okay. So I'm going to send this, but then what? Do we are we punting again and going to put this on the action list? We will. Um, we have a meeting next Thursday, so okay. Yeah, we'll, Let's we'll, finalize it. we'll finalize it then. Okay. Um, but okay. Um, okay. Katie, what's your email address? Uh, wait, can you see that? Why, why, wait, can why we send it after? to me and we'll yeah. have Chris to get it to everybody. Okay. She's All right, so here's what I can do. Uh, I wonder if I can do this. I can send what I have. I would really like it if we could somehow find this mysterious document that Berlin has that describes and what their... what I'm saying is it may not be a document. It may just be their guidelines. It, it's just how they've been doing business. You've got their form. You've got their, uh, their policy. I definitely have their practices and procedures about how they do that for the number of students. It's a piece of, you know, just in the working. Um, okay, so you ready to move on? So I know I feel like we just need to make sure we have this down. So I've sent something, and how are we going to get this on the accident, action agenda such that we vote on it next week? What needs to happen? Uh, we'll, we'll put it on the agenda. And, and, and then I, I will circulate a revision of this because this is this does not do what Amy wants it to do in terms of has too much discretion. Right. For her. Right, right. Um, and we'll also send it around proposed revisionary language to our policy, which also yeah, gives the needs, which also to. gives the principal quite a bit of yeah. discretion. So okay. it will be more concrete. Can we do this? Can every one of us please look at the policy, which I can send us an email again. Um, H three. Is H three? Yeah. And can we all please look at it? And if everybody can send me any changes they have to that policy, I will try to put it together into something that we can use for next Thursday. Does Sounds that good. work? Okay. So um, just a heads up, 
when you're responding, just respond to so just to me. Yeah. Okay. One person, right? One person. Got it. Um, next up is budget. Yep. Um, so you, open. you have your, uh, does every, and yeah. we gave I don't you the budget last time. I'm just going to give you, I'm going to do the highlights and I feel bad for Katie and Marilyn because it's, um, I don't have a detailed paper. copy. Oh, good. Of the piece, but, uh, the <laughs> budget this? that you recommended, no, I don't. this is the same budget as was in January. I will tell you some things have changed. The biggest thing that changes, you may recall, is that they were spending above the equalized above mm -hmm. the threshold. The equalized pupils have really, were finally locked in by the Agency of Education in the middle of February. So the spending above the threshold right now is $15,666. It's come down. Um, and that's adding about uh, a half a cent on the tax rate for the penalty for that amount. Okay, so it's fifteen thousand six hundred sixty-six. Sixty-six. Okay. Uh, I was three sixty-six. <laughs> um, is there any sense that um, number revision will bring us lower or push it higher? So here's the thing, you, Chris, you've experienced this for many years. Yeah. Until we get to the end of the legislative session, I can't tell you. Okay. Is there any? Because well, there's been there was talk last week of lowering the yield, the dollar yield, by the by the legislature. And joint fiscal, the joint fiscal committee. And, uh, sorry, ways and means, not joint fiscal, ways and means. So I mean, there it's uh, it bounces all over the place. So I mean, I can't, I can tell you that number could double or it could mm -hmm. be gone. I, I just can't give you anything <coughs> more stable than that. Uh, Bill, just to to clarify mm -hmm. um, regarding the threshold is so. Um, it's not that any of our expenses have changed. This is simply the fact that the, the number that we are dividing into the 2.2 million is higher than we initially projected it to be, so it's reduced yep. Yep. our cost per people. Pretty much mm -hmm. have it. Okay. I mean, that you've got it without doing an hour-long summary and how equalized pupils are cut. What is, what is the cost? People. The cost per pupil. The cost per pupil, and it's on your warning on page six. Right now, it's at twenty thousand one hundred twenty-eight dollars per pupil. That is the revised. That's the revised. We Lori did all this last Friday, or Monday of this week. I don't remember. And then what was the impact on taxes again of the fifteen thousand? So uh, between U thirty two and uh, oh the fifteen thousand? Yes. Sorry, um, that's about a half a cent per hundred. Okay, per hundred dollars. Yeah, which is value. Okay. So it's about five dollars on a hundred thousand dollar house. Okay, fifteen dollars on a. Got it. You have a total tax increase with U thirty two and. Uh, Middlesex of uh, seven point three cents going to the voters on April 9th. Okay, so if we pull the seven point three cents, half a pen, half a cent or half a penny of that is the penalty. Okay. Uh, It'd be six point eight without the penalty. Yeah, okay. And that's keeping the budget level, but not having the penalty. If you got rid of the fifteen thousand, you'd probably come down to six point three. And then can you 6 just six point three? Because you're going to have to reduce the fifteen thousand six hundred sixty-six in spending, and you get that double. You get so. that double from the third again. Okay. And then, what's the impact per hundred thousand? For the overall tax rate. For that seven point three cents. So it'd be seventy-three dollars. Okay. Yeah. Per one hundred. Per one hundred thousand dollars in assessed value. Mm -hmm. is we want to keep the budget as it is, make 
um, any alterations to it to uh, come below the threshold. And if we were to make alterations, what would the uh, what would we be reducing? I have two concerns, and they are, I think, kind of a low risk, right? I mean, it seems like merger is kind of, right. it's like barreling down on us, right? So it's very likely as a moot point. Um, I did originally, when it seemed like perhaps we might have a stay or something else might happen, I thought we should have a second budget prepared because I was actually, I am a little concerned that our community would potentially vote this down because we have inc over went over the threshold, and I think that can be a, a big red line for people. And so... Um, I guess I sort of felt like we should be prepared time-wise so we could have a budget in place. I'm not so sure that that's as important now as it was, um, and I guess I feel like we should, for me, I would probably just go with this budget. The other thing that I want to say, though, is that if we are merged, I think we have to keep the teaching staff, teaching and staff the same for the, nine, the 19 and 20 year, but after that it could be changed. And I think that there is a very real possibility that a merged board is going to want to get our costs in line with other schools' costs. And I'm wondering if we shouldn't, as since we exist as a board, take it up as what would we cut so that we are making that recommendation as a, a Rumney board instead of a transitional board deciding for us what would go. That's just my two cents. What's the amount we have to bring it down to get out of the penalty zone? 15,000. 16,000. Just say 16, 16 because it's 15,666. And, and it bounces. I mean, last year we thought we were right up to over $30,000. But once everything finished the legislature, it's, it's a relative number right now, folks. Mm -hmm. it's, not a, yeah. it's not a steadfast. Well, it, it's a number, the one we have to recommend to our community. Right, about. right. But yeah. right, you have to recommend the expenditure, yeah. the penalty can move based on other calculations. But, but please, I mean, we're recommending a budget that has a penalty attached to it because right. we don't know what the final number will be. In our best June. estimate. In our yeah. best estimate. Right. Right. Is it fair to say, Bill, that um, all possibilities have been exhausted for lowering our the, co the, the cost per pupil without taking staff reductions into consideration? I mean, I feel like we went through everything. We went through tech. We went through... We've already underfunded our capital fund. I feel like we've we gone through. Just it. <laughs> it's but true. Well, I I think true. that I I mean I'm I'm in favor of this budget because I think that the budget reflects what um, Amy said that she needed in terms of staffing and what's required at the school. Um, I think if a merger happens, then that that team is going to make the best decisions that they will for the school. I don't think pr making a cut in advance and trying to play the game in that direction. Um, is something that we necessarily have to do. So, but if we feel like we have to address this penalty, I would I would take it out of the capital fund because I think that would have the least impact on students. And then if we could become a merged board, we don't need to bring a huge capital fund into the merger. We don't have a huge one, I don't think, anyway. Yeah. Um, go ahead. No, go ahead. Mm -hmm. If um, if there are any staff positions that are not going to be occupied coming into the summer, would it be a potential to just not fill those positions? Um, For setting your budget, you'd have to know that now. Yeah. Right. And the penalty and everything is calculated on our projected budget, not our actual cost. So even if we didn't spend that extra yeah. $15,000, we would still pay the penalty because we budgeted for it. Which was confusing to me in the beginning. Made no sense, but does it make sense? No. So we fill out a budget. We decide we are planning to spend $100,000. If we go over the penalty with that $100,000, we pay it no matter what, even if we only spend $90,000. So it's not what we spend, it's what we project. Right, so it's, it's, uh, it's up front budget. rather yeah, than I got it. back in. It's what your budget, not what your yeah. actuals are. Mm -hmm. um, does this budget reflect the... Um, Teacher negotiation? Uh, pretty closely. Pretty close to, okay. Close enough. Close enough. There'll okay. be a little bit of general fund balance that we need to. Uh, okay. But not much. Okay. You know how close that is. Yeah, I do. I, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I do have to I agree that uh, Allison is, is raising an important point that we should at least be reflecting on, and, and that. Um, you know, 
I know that there are other schools that made difficult decisions on um, staffing in order to stay below the threshold. Uh, and so going into um, sort of into a, to a merged budget, if that's what's to happen, is that the, I think it is only logical to think that this, the, the Romney budget could be the, one of the first places that has looked at if, in fact, there needs to be cuts. Because I know that, Bill, you've said, and the, the, the understanding is that next year, even a merged budget is going to be under, over the threshold at this point. One, one. Even if you look at it by building, all but one building. I'm sorry, I said it again. If you look at it by building, all but one building would be there. It would be you, over? would be over. And if you look at overall as one merged budget, Projection would be over. Yeah, we're we're a year, a year, not this <laughs> upcoming year, but a year into the future. Now. <gasps> FY21, we're looking at <clears> some <throat> serious, we have serious financial concerns going forward without the legislature changing the way the threshold is calculated. And that was something that was designed in 2015 by the legislature mm -hmm. when they put this threshold in place was to make it decreasingly the gap between the threshold and what the budgets were at at schools to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And put more I mean, they could change that. And they right, right, they could. <laughs> right, right, they could. But that's just where it is. So you asked us to look multi years. Quick vote who's, um, I think official, but who's okay with the, the budget that we have as written here to present this to our voters? Okay. Um, I, I, I'm less concerned about um, um, the merge board, you know. Going out of its way to cut Romney's budget uh, because it wouldn't be cutting Romney's budget. It would be it's a, a single budget at that point. All the budgets can be added up, and that's going to be the uh, overall budget for the um, supervisor union as a whole. And I think it would be I just could not foresee um, those board members, you know, basically spanking Romney for being over the budget by fifteen thousand dollars. I don't think it's a matter of spanking. I think it's, it's just a matter of um, you know, where where have tough, where have already tough decisions had to be made in right. schools, yeah. and if you look at you know where those decisions is made, you run and they're happening at U thirty two. You know that you know they happened at Berlin. Um, I think that I don't know if they've happened in Calus, East Montpelier, and Calus. They've happened. And so this is the only place that hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. So I think just as as managers, as you know, as, as stewards, it's a logical place to at least look mm -hmm. first. Um, so I think that's so. So <coughs> let me ask if we shifted capital funds to or, or fund balance to cover this shortfall. You know, it, it's really not being fiscal managers. It's just mm -hmm. you know using one-time money to. Um, I think but that's you can't deal with you the can't with what the budget process is through the, uh, through the. Um, and the two code, if you're setting an expenditure budget, you're not setting the revenues. Mm -hmm. So while you might take revenues out of here, and this is one of the adjustments that happened in back in Act 68, because this is part of what happened that was happening under Act 60 for terms in place back in the early 2000s, so that people were getting revenues from other places and not counting it on their expense. And so what they changed to for calculating tax rates was like, we're only looking at your expenses. We're not yeah, looking at where you're getting revenue from and what you're budgeting for that expense. So we would have to actually cut costs then yeah. in order to come under the threshold. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm trying to say, aren't we aware there is an there is a position that is a, going to be open here at our school? Right. You're talking, yes. What if we just don't fill that position? Um, I don't know if it's a position that we couldn't. I'm Why? not aware not of what fill. this position is. Sorry. Right. It's a. We're, we're talking about Mitch Allen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So we're talking about Mitch Allen's game, basically giving a notice yeah. for next for next week. For March 15th. Um, but I, I don't think her position, is her position one that um, needs to be filled? I think it does. Uh, yeah, I think it does too. I mean, just in terms of the role that she plays. Right. Yeah. So it's, I don't think it's one that would necessarily stay open. Meaning that we wouldn't have to fill it. Um, so. 
I mean, do we have positions like that? No, I mean, we don't. We, we don't come <laughs> I mean, with positions. That's the issue. That we don't, <laughs> right. Right. That well, we don't need. We don't, we don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. We try not to do that. We try to but get that's things. my point. We, we need all these positions. We need our teachers. We need our, par- we need our paras. Mm-hmm. We need our paras. We need our teachers, and we need an MTSS. You two are talking about making hard decisions. I'm throwing out a decision out there that doesn't require us to cut someone that we are emotionally drawn, you know, have a connection to. Is it a position? If we have to cut positions, this is an open position. Why aren't we discussing cutting it? What's the difference between her position, a para? I understand what the difference is, but... So we should be taking... If you're going to ask it, what I would say to the board is if you want to cut to get to a certain place, tonight's not the time to say what it is. Give us the bottom line. That's all the voters have to approve. I know that's hard to sell to the voters, but we should be doing it in a more thoughtful way mm-hmm. and looking at the overall system. And that's trying to take, it's taking every individual person that we're attached to out of the equation. We should be asking what it looks like from a system perspective. Mm-hmm. So the real question is, do we want to send back to central office the come back to us with a budget that's under the threshold, or are we going to approve this budget as is? We have. Well, we have to. We have well, a we warning can, that has yeah. to be we, set. We, we, to I know. Time. But we can also approve a budget that's ten thousand less than this, depending on the threshold, yeah. uh, and and figure out where it's going to come from later. Yeah, that's what I just said to you. Yeah, yeah I know. There many, I know, but it doesn't mean personnel. And, and, what I'm saying is that doesn't mean personnel. Well, that yeah, I mean, right. that's Okay. Well, but, how, but I don't know that that's a possible thing. I mean, I feel like we went through everything, and we went through health insurance, and we went through tech, and we went through books, and we went through facilities maintenance, and we did not come up with anything that was twenty thousand dollars. It wasn't a person. I thought there's still. I haven't read it here. Still thirty thousand in the capital fund. But Isn't then that's that like totally non fiscally responsible and not fund our capital fund. I mean, I get because we're being merged, but that just feels so duplicitous. I mean, we're going to go be with a bunch of other schools, and we're going to say, oh, we're, we did this really irresponsible thing because we want you guys to share the burden of that. That just feels That's the terrible. whole part. You know what? That's a merger issue because, mm-hmm. you know, the folks from Callis and Worcester would be saying, we're being forced to share our debt yes. from all of you other guys mm-hmm. that we didn't in- incur. And, and so I don't think it's duplicitous. It's just the way this merger is going to play out um, is that folks are going to be taking on burdens that they wouldn't necessarily take on if they were the ones making the decision. And I think um, it's a wash. I think what, what? I think what yeah, uh, I mean, I heard you Allison, right Allison right. is saying, though, it's one thing for, um, you know, for through no through, through no fault of anyone's uh, is cows or, um, or Worcester taking on other people's debts other than the fact that they were forced to do so by state, you know, state mandate. This is a this is a choice that we, that, that we're essentially making to pass that on. Well, so so I, yeah, I think there is I think there I, I think there's at least a distinction to well, be I, made. Well, I forty six was made as a choice by a lot of legislators. So there is but we there schools. is personal responsibility there. Um, we have knowing. Let, let me just yeah. finish on this, and then I know it's an act forty six thing. Knowing that other schools that don't have debt are going to be forced to merge with others that do, and it's going to be a shift. I mean, there was nothing that was written in that would protect that against from happening. It could have been. So, I mean, yeah. I, but anyway, that's I agree. It's terrible. I'm with you. It's terrible. But to me, this is an example. Would be Obamacare, right? So, I don't care whether you like Obamacare or not. I consider it deeply irresponsible when we have people in government who are purposefully trying to make it fail. Like that just fills me with rage, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like this is, it's not the same, but it's kind of akin to that. If we want to go, if we're having a partnership <coughs> and it's happening, we better start playing nice from the very beginning or we're immediately going to get into this situation where we have everybody, you know, it feels unfair. feels unfair what this other school has. I, I just feel like we have to do everything we can to be as nice, to like make this merger as pleasant as possible. But what do we have that others don't have? And, well, and can I also just say what's going to happen, like what the other towns are going to see when they see our budget? They're going to see the per pupil expenditure. Well, and what we're talking about here, if you lowered the capital fund, that number goes down. So it actually looks like we're playing better, and they don't know the history of the capital fund and what's been funded. And I mean, you tell me, Bill, like, aren't all the schools kind of all over the map on what they fund and they don't fund for capital funding? And I it's don't... gotten a lot better, Kyle, than it has. Yeah. They're probably the lowest. Um... The lowest funding is right now from Callis to their capital fund, and they have the least amount of reserves coming in. 
Yep. The best funded capital fund is East Montpelier and U32. Mm -hmm. um, and U32 made a decision a couple of years ago to have it directly funded from the budget instead of uh, coming from tuition uh, above budgeted tuition expenditures, which was a smart move as well. So what's Calus at now in terms of what they're They're around $65,000 coming in with their capital fund. It's pretty tiny. And they only have 43000 going in each year. Yep. Should be higher. So, I mean, it's the, the, what's going to be looked at, it's going to be the paraeducators. The, there isn't another building that's staffed the way this building is for paraeducators. That's what's going to be looked at. So I agree. And I just got to be really open and transparent no, about that. That's yeah. what's going to be looked Longest at. Better. Yeah, it totally is. And we had our teachers sitting in this room, at least some of them. I mean, it wasn't like a full picture, but we had several teachers sitting in this room telling us they did not want their pairs to go. And I guess all I'm saying is I think we should consider if we if we really want to protect that, I feel like maybe we need to do ahead of time. But I... And then, well, if we want to do that, then we will pass this budget. Um, because if we're going to reduce it to 20000 and and I would, I would vote for a reduction, actually, um, and try to keep it away from uh, any staffing. Um, but if, if you want to protect para, then you vote for this budget because this wants all the paras that for next year. And I'm going to uh, recommend right away, and Chris, you and I have had this, uh, yeah. I'd tell you go right away to the capital fund. That's where you go. Because everything else is tight. I don't know. There's an, and you ask me yeah, yeah. how mm -hmm. tight everything else, everything else is tight. Yeah. Yeah. And we would do that after we pass this budget. Right. Well, right now. Whenever. Yeah. When, does the, really when does the final budget need to be established? We just have to um, pass a bottom line expenditure number. So what happens, to give you what happens here right now, um, we have to provide by somewhere in the beginning of June. I don't have the actual date. Laurie and I were going over this this morning. We have to provide information to the Agency of Education so that by July 15th, they can produce bills to the town clerks for taxes. Right. If we don't have a budget by then, which is still a likelihood, because depending on the merger piece, mm -hmm. bills will be late out to taxpayers to collect taxes in the towns. So that's setting of that budget is really cru cru crucial. Um, and that's, that's how the system works. It doesn't matter on what you spend it on. You've, this board has adjusted spending or has gone into using general fund balance to pay for spending above and beyond the budget. Mm -hmm. And there's been times when we've been tight and we've curtailed spending in different places. So that's doable. It's not so much what's in the lines mm -hmm. that you need for tonight. You need that bottom line. So and I think, hear, oh, go, go ahead, Brian. Am I Rish. hearing that we basically don't need to establish a firm budget until June 1st, potentially? We have that long? I think, it's, I think it's more a political piece, and I, it, it's more a political piece of what your overall budget. I'm telling you an overall budget number. Your budget is a guideline. You, this right here, when you send out this piece to voters, which we're going to be publishing, it's about people want to know what you're going to spend it on. Mm -hmm. And so when you say to voters, oh, we're going to change it, but we'll go find that later. In some towns, that's fine. People understand that. They're used to that. That has not been the culture in Washington Central. The culture, or the culture, or the expectations, or the practice, whatever word you want to use, has been, hey, we know what those numbers and how they add up. I'm not trying to force you to do something tonight. I'm just trying to point out some of the obvious pieces. Yeah, and I, and I look at the, the, the advantage of being sort of upfront and transparent about how we plan to expend or use um, taxpayer dollars makes complete sense to me in a lot of ways. I'm also thinking if we have more time to allow just things to materialize, whether it's information yeah. from the legislature or staff, and whatever it might be. Staffing might, patterns. I mean, you guys know, you've, you've seen it in September. We come back and say, hey, we got $30,000 more. We have $30,000 more in cost. We may have more flexibility three months from, yeah. or two months from now. In well, but we, we also want to be aware of leaving enough time for a petition to, if a budget even passes, petition to challenge it in that, that time frame. So we need to make the latest we probably would be May. Or I, we may well, we, we, have, we can still we vote. I'm saying we vote on it on the 9th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we vote on an actual, we vote on a budget on the 9th, but if we had some time, additional time, to figure out how all those dollars 
played out, would that... I, it seems to me that when we vote on uh, the budget on the 9th, that the critical outcome of that is that then as a school we can move forward, or as a board we can move forward and offer the contracts mm -hmm. to the employees who are essential to making the school operate and ensuring that learning happens. And so that, um, I know as a teacher, I'm always waiting for two weeks after town meeting day because that's typically when I get a contract. Um, and that's a very, um, that's a point of reassurance. And so I think that it, that also is going to ensure that you keep your best staff. We keep our best staff as opposed to um, if people have uncertainty or if they think they're going to receive a letter of intent mm -hmm. and some vague um, expectation of employment, then more people might start seeking. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that that's, that's what happens. Point, yeah. So I think offering a contract is, is important. Yep. And, well, and could, we, could we still offer contracts? You can yeah. offer contracts without a budget. Yeah. So choose well, as a, we as know a board. Oh. <laughs> we you, can, you can do what either way. It's up mm -hmm. to you. So are we at this point saying that we could either vote for this budget as written tonight or we could vote for a number that is 16 or whatever thousand dollars less than this yes. and then see if it shakes out? That's what we're having here, right? That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. yeah. Are you looking, where are you guys falling on this? But the, if it shakes yeah. out would be, where? what's the shakeout? Is that... The shakeout means that the to see if the numbers change over time, so that we so I can't don't have I can't short. advise you as that because we're going to yeah. need to. We're, I think it's responsible if you're going to go down lower. Like I'm saying, you don't need to do it tonight, mm -hmm. but we need to do it pretty quickly, and it might be th next Thursday that we have the discussion. So where do you want to take that out? Because I think I would advise you that yeah. you have to talk to your voters about presenting a budget that you should be able to say. So this is where we plan we're planning on taking it. Maybe somewhere else that it can come out of, but right now our best guess, if you ask us today, is X. Mm -hmm. So it's just basically saying, if this is the budget, this is what we plan to spend it on, and we're not going to change that. Right? Well, you changed it before, Chris. That's why no, I'm no, saying. No, but you. presenting that to the voters. Right, right, right. right. Okay. What was that? Nothing. Uh, the okay. the one thing that makes me nervous is was it last week? that we talked about the budget, yes, because you weren't here. Mm -hmm. And there were two or three community members in here that said going over the penalty zone is a hard line for your community. Mm -hmm. I would vote to, I think we should keep the budget, but that's the only thing in the back of my head that mm -hmm. I'm hearing is God forbid. Well, the, I, risk, that we, the risk that we run, sir, Go ahead, uh, please. With, uh, a failed budget is being forced in that position to offer contracts without with, without um, right even clear expenditures and so but that's is the default plan I'm not trying to interrupt yeah. you too much but is the default plan then if you send in the current budget yeah and if it if it got voted down then would would Could we are you suggesting oh we would then take out that 15 from the capital fund we modify it so because of the voters are saying we're not supporting this budget and you'd have to modify it, but but offer teacher contracts right. without actually having and then we're looking budget. at you know another 40, realistically at least 40 days before the next election. Yeah, and plus we're spending you know there are some costs of having elections mm -hmm. too. Yep. Um, so I would I'd rather us put a put a budget that we feel confident both in what it's the services that it's del delivering but, but that it will also pass mm -hmm. um, and not put us in a position where we could potentially be offering student teacher contracts that we might not be able to honor mm -hmm. um, down the road. Okay. So, um, I I think to get us there, I'm going to propose that we um, adopt a budget. Of uh, $3,248,467, which will get us just below the um, penalty zone. Uh, Did you take 20000 off? I took 20000 20 off. OK. So uh, 3248000 uh, Four hundred and sixty seven dollars. Are you taking that out of the capital fund? Is that your um, proposal? That, that is a decision we make later. I guess my um, question is if there's not any flexibility in the budget, if that's a decision that we make later, 
concerns me a little bit of how do how would you offer a contract if there's a twenty thousand dollar question and, mark and, in the budget? And I said before I would be willing to go below and not have it come from staffing, mm -hmm. and so figure it out somewhere, some other how way. To pull pennies right. out of yeah, walls. That's, that would be my goal. Mm -hmm. I think if we do this, we all have to be extremely clear that unless we can agree that. I mean, unless we would decide staffing's issue, we have to agree to take this out of the capital fund because there. I mean, I don't. Unless I misunderstood, we just did not have a lot of other flexibility. So, is everybody <coughs> comfortable underfunding the capital fund by that much? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we're not actually making an agreement to, I guess, keep staffing where it is. I suppose that would have to be, unless that's part of your motion that staffing. No, it's not, it's not part of the motion. Because I don't think it would be proper to be part of the motion. Okay. Um, we just motion on the budget. So just a point of order. I didn't hear you say that as a motion. Okay. Uh, I said I would propose this as a motion. Right. Oh, okay. right. Yeah, I did so not officially say. So I just I'm, make, I'm just trying to get you. Yep. I'm, I'm also trying to yep. help you get get along yep. here just in time. We've been here almost two hours. And I'm thinking of your kids out there. I, I have to take. So is everybody ready for a motion? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I move that we. Uh, recommend a budget uh, and warn a budget in the amount of three million two hundred forty eight thousand four hundred and sixty seven dollars uh, for the two thousand nineteen two thousand twenty school year at the Runley Memorial School. I'll second. Any more discussion? Can I just recommend that you say you adopt a budget? No. And just the warning and everything else you'll do in your next piece. Okay. We'll then I, I would move that we adopt a budget in that amount. Did you get that, Lisa? That to adopt a budget. To adopt a budget. Okay. okay. Any more discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. I don't disagree. <laughs> it's so hard. It's such a hard. Um, next up is the um, warning. Yep. We'll take, we'll take care of it. That's, That's on page, page nine. Is an action item. We would. Um, I have the warning here. We will change the amount on there and change the education spending. Um, and you know, as we always do, you would have a public. You need to have a public hearing, ten days before the vote, mm -hmm. as you're used to. You know that. Um, if you wanted to set that tonight, we could do that. So it could mm -hmm. be on the morning. I'm really uh, sorry. Yeah. I have to leave you guys. Okay. okay. Can um, I have you sign this, yeah. please? Can I just, regarding the principal search mm -hmm. committee, yes. um, I am strongly in favor of Chris Malone having a part in that, and I'm strongly in favor of uh, our teaching staff having as strong a presence in that committee as possible. They are the ones, this is going to be their boss. We should make it a boss where they all work harmoniously together, in my humble opinion. And what's your position on a, a third party a consultant? If our teachers think a third party is important, then I will support that, despite the fact that we are talking about $16,000 making or breaking our budget. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you personally want to be a board member. I was just going to ask that, too. Um, you wanted to do it, yes? I would love to do it. I think that'd be great. I think you would be a very good choice. Uh, if nobody else wants to do it, I will. But I think, I don't know, well, it seems like we have a lot of good who, choices. Who else is interested, just so we have it on the table here? Are you interested, Brian? Yeah, okay, so then we'll... Marilyn? <laughs> no, honestly, I think you would be great. I was going to nominate you and Katie. <laughs> okay, so... Do we have any idea of the time commitment? There will be um, at least a half day of committee coming together and forming questions, and then there will be a, probably a three-quarters to a day of interviewing, and then uh, it depends... I usually ask one of you to go along with site visits. Do you have an interest in doing it? Uh, you know, I, I took. I said I was not going to do it this time. Be right. solely because you did it last time. Uh, in part, but also give others an opportunity. Okay. So, but I would say, yeah. Okay. I mean, I did serve on the committee to find a um, support staff for the front desk. So, if somebody else wants to take their turn, completely willing to let that happen. But otherwise, I, I'm, I'm okay to do it if that's what you guys decide is going to be the best for everyone. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. Thank you. Early. Okay. So, um, Warren, uh, what time? Yeah, you, yeah. Just, you want to do it. You've done traditionally the Saturday before 
the election. And the night, and the day and the, before. The day before here. Okay, so that? Yes. Okay. So we'll do it for the uh, April 8th yeah. uh, here. And then uh, whatever that Saturday is. Yeah, I will. At the red hand. No, this, this needs to get signed. If you yeah, no, pass okay. that, I'm going to write that on here. <laughs> Saturday at 9. Yep. I think it's been the tradition. Is that April 8th? No. What? What was April 8th? You may not want to do it April 8th, actually, Chris, because there may be in a district organization meeting. On April 8th? Yes. On, Saturday? on Monday night. Monday night. Okay. Before the election. So you may just want to do it that Saturday okay. or Sunday, because that April 8th is a district well, we organization meeting. What if we did it the Thursday? Because to have it at Rumney. Yeah, yeah, that's um, fine. So the Thursday. All right, we can do that beforehand. beforehand. Wait, sorry, what did you just agree? Because I didn't, I didn't hear this. There would be an informational <coughs> meeting here Thursday. Um, I've got to get out my calendar to give you the date. It would be April, April 4th, I believe. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, April 4th at 6. Saturday thing? And Saturday would be at the Red Hen at 9 a.m. on April 6th. Yeah. Right. Is it okay if we're not all here? I'm going to oh, be yeah, out of the country need, then. Yeah, okay. Need one or yeah. Two. What a traveler. <laughs> New life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. So people can sign that. We all sign. We'll get that taken care of. Okay. So we all set with budget issues. Uh, did you adopt the warning? You need to adopt. Okay. So. We, um, I move to adopt the warning um, of the budget set for a vote on April 9th uh, and have an informational meeting on a Saturday, April 6th, 4th, 4th, or 6th, 6th, and then also on Thursday, April 4th. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so last order of Second to last order of business, we'll talk about the principal search committee. Yeah. Um, is there any motions based on what we've discussed previously today? What are our options at this point in time? I mean, I, I, I agree, time is over the yes, we need to get this shown on the road. Um, so the, the things that are pending are um, whether to add um, Chris um, oh, um, yeah, okay. as, a, as a member of the committee, um, appoint um, Allison and uh, Katie as uh, the board members uh, pick out of a hat uh, community members that are going to be um, asked to serve, uh, and then uh, the final would be uh, hiring consultant. Yeah, that's that's what I'm most interested is in is talking about sort of that that last step. Um, if we can, doesn't matter which priority we want, but that's what I meant when I was mm -hmm. asking. Mm -hmm. We need to get okay. this going. But, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Can, so yeah, that's who's going to lead this? Um, okay. So let's. Um, so I, I, I just, I agree with it, what Chip presented from the teachers. I, you've heard that from me before, yeah. having an outside consultant. It is going to delay us. It's just where it is. I cannot spin someone up to be ready for Monday. Okay. Um, I, you know, and it's just, it, that's, I'm going to try to do it as fast as I can. I'm going to be making phone calls tomorrow morning. But I just, you know, to call someone, I, I haven't talked to Lori Singer since I told her that the board wasn't interested anymore. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so, you know, it's just in fairness to her. I don't know where she stands. I would call her back and say, you know, the board has changed its mind since it's had some further input. And would you be willing to do this? And what's your schedule look like? And if she wasn't able to do it, I'd start getting back on the list of people that do this work. Um, has the position been posted? Yeah, it's been posted since. Yeah, yeah the, well, the principal been, position. Okay. Been yeah, we've been posted yeah. since January. And we've been telling, okay. we've told, one of the things I'm going to have to do is send out to all the candidates. That, that I asked them to reserve days for interview on the week of the 18th. I actually gave them the Tuesday and Wednesday, and I'm going to have to push that back. Do we have to push that back, you think? What well, if you, Chris and I were talking about this earlier today, um, and I, Chris and I are, I think we're in total agreement about this. You, to do forums, to get the attributes and all that, and to get everything collated, then you want the committee to set and take all that information and develop interview questions, and then after they've done that, select candidates and tell them. That's a two-week process from when the forums start. So we did this two years ago, right? So in terms of the forums, are we talking about like a forum with the teachers and the staff and the community? Okay. Yes. So in terms of, 
I believe, but maybe it's worth us reaching out to the teachers that in yesterday's meeting, they didn't feel like their attributes changed. They didn't feel like there were, and I think we need to confirm that with the staff, but I don't know that we could not quickly confirm that with the staff like next week. Like, are you wanting to sit down together as a group and talk about these things again? I think they did that yesterday and felt there's no change in what they wanted from two years ago. I'm just, it sounds like that was part of their conversation that they had had. And then I'm wondering with the community, again, we just did this two years ago. Do we have to have a forum again? I think it, from my perspective in the community, it's absolutely um, because it's been two year um, time frame since. Uh, we've had two years of, of experience and um, I think we're in a different pl place than we were two years ago. So I think from a community perspective, it would be helpful, and it would be helpful to hear it again and give up folks an opportunity to um, comment on wh whether they think things have changed, if they haven't, um, what they're still looking for. If they have, if matters have changed, then to hear that. Um, I, think, I think the staff should have the same opportunity. And I, I would agree with that. I just... Uh, Right, but could you pull that together? Like, could they do that on their own? Well, no, because you no, need to consult. Yes, yeah. got it. Yeah. Yep, I hear you. Yeah. Okay. It, it's really worth to you. What I've heard the whole way from everybody is, like, you know, keep this as um, a process that brings it out as fairly and unbiasedly as possible, so you mm -hmm. don't shortcut the process. Frankly, okay. to do that. Yep, you're right. So, um, so uh, any motion on whether we uh, hire a uh, facilitator? Yeah, five thousand ballpark, <laughs> five six thousand dollars. Wow. A consultant's like fifteen hundred dollars a day. Dang. I would make a motion that we hire a consultant. It sounds like it's important to the teachers and. They are the reason that we're here. Is there a second? And the kids are the reason that we're here. Is there a second? <coughs> I'll second it. Okay. Um, so, is there any more discussion? Was there a dollar amount in that motion? Right, there's not a dollar amount. Okay. Oh. Um, but we can. Do I you can to modify it to maybe it? say no more than. Six thousand dollars. I would suggest that you don't. Yeah. Okay. If we're gonna go in, we gotta go in. Yeah, Are they right. facilitating the whole process? I mean, how do they? So where what, do they what start? happens? Um, and when I've talked to facilitators, they're like, "Bill, where do you take over?" They they mm -hmm. literally say that to me. Yep. Because that's what their experience is everywhere else. And I said, "Well, um, I want you through the first round and the second round of visits, and then I don't think I would take you to site visits." Mm -hmm. But the, it's always been a subset. It's usually been a teacher or two, a board member, um, sometimes a community member, sometimes not, and myself. And then who convenes? The, how then does the finalizing of the... That usually happens, um, that happens with the group talking together. That small group really says, hey, and it, you have... The consultant is not involved at that point to facilitate? No. I mean, you could, but you're going to have a lot. You're going to take that six and push it up to fifteen thousand dollars. So it's that just the time. facilitator is facilitating the these forums that you're the forums. The, they're interviews. facilitating the forums. They're facilitating the interviews. They're collecting all the feedback. They're making sure that we have templates and all this in place because we've done it enough times. You know that all the information is collected. We have to keep all of it under labor statutes for two years of all the interviews and all the records. So we keep all that, um, and they make sure that's done, and it's done in a way that's confidential. And then they help facilitate half-day visits, so they're the person, bring the person around to meet here at the building and at central office. It's a part of that. We keep the interviews off-site, the first level interviews, because the people that are interviewing for this, um, you need to help them keep their confidentiality. You don't do it at the school. Otherwise, you'll lose good candidates, frankly. Because mm -hmm. they have to protect what their current job is. Okay. Um, just for information purposes, was there one of the things that was going to be looked into was um, other, potentially other facilitators outside of central office? I did. 
Nothing? Nothing. Would that work within the SU? Can you, um, I guess I'm not sure what the so question we, is. So the last meeting we yeah. asked if there was, um, outside of central office staff, were there other uh, administrators oh. across the SU okay. that might be able to provide this service? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any more discussion? Um, do you have a list of people that in your Rolodex? People. Okay. Yeah. And I talked to VPA as well. Jason, okay. Jason, come back to me if you need some help. They're not in the bit. They, their board has said to stay out of it. Mm -hmm. He's given me some names. Any more discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'll, start working on, but I'll, let, I'll keep you updated on timeline because I want to get something out to the parents again about when the forums are going to be. Uh -oh. okay. So, yeah, because we talked about that, getting the, you know, people having names too. To we were going to send out a communication saying that we we're still accepting. Yeah. So we have this. That, that communication didn't go out. That communication didn't go out. I have seven or eight community members here that are saying. No, I think we need we, we need to send. So. You can, we can keep doing this, but I'm going to keep delaying your process. I'm sorry, it's just, you, you want to so, get this going. But what, what, nothing can get started until we hire a consultant, right? Yeah, I mean, that's where we're at. And the community has not been asked to participate in this yet. People have volunteered. No, that, we did, that, no, that's, that's not, that's it not was, uh, uh, Letters have been sent out to once. us. But, but, well, oh, we got it. Originally, yeah. um, but, but there's the fairness is that... Um, we have delayed the, the process, right. and we were supposed to send out another one saying folks who have already put in their names are still in, don't right. have to re-express mm. interest. Yeah. Um, and so we should send out a notice um, and give a hard deadline of next Thursday. Next Thursday, mm -hmm. so yeah. we can pull out of the hat right. next then Thursday. We'll, then we'll pick. Okay. Then. Okay. Um, but I move that we um, appoint. Can I, just before yeah, sure. we... Um, sure. Well, no, I'm sorry, you can do that. There's just something that, there's a pub, public communication mm -hmm. that we res, uh, received uh, a couple weeks ago regarding the principal search that was asked to be talked about and as part of the public record. And okay, why don't you do that first? Um, well, it's, uh, the challenge is, is that it includes a lot of um, it is privacy issues, even though the parent uh, doesn't have a problem with it. I don't think we can necessarily. So I would I would advise the board when there's pri concerns about privacy, that parents have the ability to not have to stay within FERPA regulations, but all of you as a board individually and collectively do. So even if we get, we're reading stuff that the parent has sent us, that's right. Okay, and that has been many people have. That's the practice and. So can you summarize the sentiment without I would almost identifying uh, information? I think I'd rather for us to 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 maybe address it. I want to honor the person's wishes, and I don't. I, I'd like to send it around to everyone in advance, and then maybe try to come back and. Um, Next Thursday, and, and, and raise it because okay. that'll still be in within the. I will, yeah. Okay. Does that work for everyone else? That works fine. I'm, Very good. I'm not sure what it is, so sure. I got it. So if you send it to Katie, it may come to the only one that has Maybe it. Maybe I do got it. So got anyway. it. I, I think everybody in town got it already. I mean, I respect your process very that, much. No, but, but they, they, David, I have to protect I, the board. I, I completely okay. get that. They, they cannot do something that would violate purpose, even if everyone in town had it. Right. It, it, it's I just like me. That. I can't, even if it's common knowledge, I can't re reveal student information. Okay. I have to protect that. Um, thank you on that. Yes. Um, so I'm going to move that we um, appoint Katie Shalou and um, Allison Cornwall uh, as the board representatives on the search committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, thank you. I will follow up with Chip on just to get the um, uh, community member, uh, the uh, staff member. Yeah, they're good. They, they were going to give them to me. Give them to you. Okay. Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll send them forward. Uh, I would Sorry. also move that we um, 
expand the committee membership to include Chris Malone. Chris, Chris Malone. Right. Um, this is a Malone. Malone um, as a member um, of the committee. Is there a second? Second. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, any other things we need to do? I would like it. I did not Just in terms of search oh, committee. Search to me. Yeah. Anything else? I think we're in a good place. No. Okay. Next up, um, I for, for, so we just didn't have our usual template tonight. I forgot to ask you to, for an agenda revision. And as was mentioned earlier, Meg Sheldon has tendered her resignation right. effective next week. I don't remember which date. Um, the 15th of March. Well, I told you that, but I oh. thought I said the same thing. I wasn't sure it was exactly oh, you're, the 15th. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but it may be. Uh, but I need the board to accept her resignation. Per the master agreement, you mm -hmm. have to accept it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a termination form that she signed, but she's pending on it. Is there a motion? I move to accept the resignation of Ms. Sheldon. But the state of position? No. Oh, we have to. Is okay, there? a second. Okay. Any discussion? Um, is there it's a, a rationale or reason why? That can be stated? No. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Are you gonna we, yeah. Are you gonna, are you gonna I will. Um, and for voting. Because I didn't oh. do voting last time. Well, then, oh. then, then we got we to go back retroactively and do <laughs> anyone else that is <laughs> the board. Um, so we want to um, thank Meg Sheldon for her um, very worthy and um, uh, impactful work uh, at the Romney School over the many years where she um, really transitioned from um, being a um, very wonderful reading specialist into um, balancing administrative and reading specialist um, skills and uh, activities. Um, she, a hole will be created uh, that will be hard to fill. And, but we wish her the best in, in her future endeavors. Um, Tattoo my kids have them? Yeah, it's, you know, to improve no skill. Mm -hmm. um, and also um, want to thank Woden, uh, teach out for her many years of service on the board, um, and now that she's over in uh, Romania, mm -hmm. I think, um, and that um, she um, just brought an air of freshness and um, inquisitiveness and curiosity uh, that um, will be hard to replace. But Katie Chabot has. <laughs> what is it? Um, so uh, we wish her the well, uh, best and uh, hope to see her soon when she's back from her. Can I suggest another one to you? Since you just said something about Woden. Yeah. I think you should for Caroline as well. Oh, I think I did. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, just, no, no. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, but she was here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, any any other business we need to attend? Unless we stand adjourned. Um, we'll go. Thank you. That's it. Just a second. Just a second.